Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to paint this astronaut themed painting. It's got a, an eclipse in the background, the Earth. He's out in outer space there floating around. Uh, should be a pretty easy one. Actually, it's a little bit easier than it looks probably. So I uh, hope you will join me for this and I'll show you step by step how to do it all the way through from beginning to end. Let's get started. Okay, so here's my example painting. This was really fun. It's definitely a departure from my normal flowers and trees. <laughs> I've got my husband Mark here with me today. Hey there, everybody. He's going to be manning the chat during the live show. So if you've got questions for me while I'm painting, you can let him know and I will try to answer those best I can. <clears throat> so I started out with this one with a black uh, canvas panel. I've gone ahead and pre-sketched it since I could. <laughs> <laughs> not not always can so save us a little bit of time but I'll go over how to how I drew it uh, with you <clears throat> Let me go over the palette real quick with you also we've got titanium white and this is a uh, liquid titanium white so it's a little bit softer uh, more fluid uh, carbon black really any black will do Tit uh, I'm sorry <laughs> quinacridone magenta uh, cadmium red light cadmium orange cadmium yellow medium Thalo green, yellow shade, thalo green, thalo blue, green shade, ultramarine blue, doxazine purple, and burnt umber. Boy, that was a mouthful today. <laughs> Couldn't get through those. <laughs> so just pretty much a uh, rainbow of colors. Uh, if you don't have these exact ones, you can use whatever you've got that are similar. Um, but uh, all right, let me go over how I drew him. I painted the background just plain old carbon black, so just any black will work. I actually did a uh, ultramarine blue and black for this one, but I decided it was uh, a little too chalky. I really wanted it a little bit deeper black, so I went ahead and went straight black with this one. Um, all right, so for the sun uh, eclipse part, there we go. I just used a little round cup and you'll want something like this, either uh, a uh, bottle that's about that size or um, a little round cup or some sort because that'll make our eclipse a lot easier. So you're just going to chalk around that and we're actually going to use that cup to paint so you really don't have to chalk it if you don't want to. Um, then for the astronaut, uh, I went ahead and put in the earth first, so it's just going to curve from side to side and fill up that whole bottom part of the canvas and come up to about the quarter mark, maybe the third. Let me see. Yeah, it's about at the third, actually. So if you want to mark the top there, that might help you um, figure out how to, how to arc it up, up and over, and back around. You can use a compass if you have one, or you can use uh, a large plate uh, to get that curve if you're having trouble getting it even. Um, you could also draw a circle on a piece of paper and fold it in half so that you have equal an equal arc. There's all kinds of different ways of doing it. Shouldn't be too too difficult, hopefully. And then the astronaut part himself, I just wanted him to fill up this whole spot and angle just slightly this way. So he is, let's see, the bottom of his arms are right about at the halfway mark. So if you just kind of mark his elbows out and then figure out where you want him to start. And I just brought him right up to the top pretty close. And I wanted his knees to come just below the earth there. So if you want to do a line there and a line there and then kind of split him in half almost for his waist. And then this little backpack thing is going to be as wide as his waistline. So you can do like a big, what is that, honey? Mark would know. <laughs> that backpack thing, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's a big old backpack. <laughs> I think it's kind of like his oxygen and oh, right. things like that. Well, it's important stuff. Right, important obviously. stuff. Yeah. Backpack. So you can put <laughs> two big old rectangle and you can kind of extend it all the way down here and it'll kind of make his waist so you can just kind of do this big old rectangle shape right there and then um, 
at just above the halfway mark of that rectangle. So if you, you know, measure it from here to here, there is his head, his big old circle shape. It's a little bit more oval than circle, so it's a little bit longer than it is round. And then there's these two little, I don't know what these are off the side, and then this gets cut almost in half. Curve it just a little bit like that. And then his arms, uh, remember we did our little marks here, so his arms are going to come right off of his ear pieces or whatever these little things are off the side. I think they're like lights that are sitting next to his helmet. So his two shoulders are gonna curve here and here like that. And they're just gonna curve at angle out. And the arms are gonna look way bigger than the thighs because he's tilted towards us. So don't freak out about that. It's gonna look weird uh, when you're drawing it. And, um, but, ooh, super chat. Nice. <laughs> we got a super chat donation from Joanna. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you so much. That's awesome. How yep. long do we go with the lights? That's good enough. That's good enough? <laughs> okay. We got some party lights. <laughs> Just to make it even more fun. Okay. <laughs> so you're going to want the uh, shoulder to elbow about equal to the wrist so just kind of measure that and it gets a little bit more narrow down at the bottom but his arms are very bulky um, if you look at a space suit I actually didn't print out the photograph that I'm using as my reference but I didn't really go by it exactly anyway so I just kind of and then his fist kind of just does this little rounded thing and he's got one finger kind of poking out that kind of curves down and out or you can just kind of do a rounded fist if you don't want to have to do worry about worry about fingers um, same thing on this side you've got the elbow comes up and this hands kind of coming toward us so it's not as long so it's probably as long from here to here as it is from here to here instead of this long length because the hand is sort of coming towards us so we're not seeing the whole length of it so there's a curve right here and right about at that bend, that's where the hand hits. And there's just some fingers sort of in this glove going this way. And we're really not going to draw in all of these features. We're just going to be dry brushing. If you look at my um, example, it's very, very um, impressionistic. So we're just going to be dry brushing just the suggestion of hand and um, fingers and things like that. So you're not going to have to go into really uh, detail. So don't let that stress you out. Um, okay, and then so here's in his waist. We're going to cinch it in a little bit and then his leg is going to come down like this. And I found that this length from here to here was about the same distance from the waist to the knee. So if you want to use your fingers and kind of do that, it'll kind of help you know where to do your legs kind of comes out and down kind of points a little bit round it out and then angle it back up and then same thing on this side and this leg is actually a little bit farther down because of the tilt of the body and it rounds out and comes back up and there's kind of wrinkly fabric there and then there's there's all kinds of little doodads on his chest if you want to draw a few random squares and like a tube coming off here you can do that now there's all these little buckles and snaps and things hanging off of him so I didn't really go into a very um, detailed drawing when I did mine because it just kind of as as we paint it will kind of just add a few little details here and there so there's like a little thing up here and a little couple things up there too. All right, so there's our astronaut. Not too hard, just a few circles and kind of some rounded shapes. So, and if you don't want to draw and it stresses you out, just uh, I have a traceable available on Patreon that you can get. Those are a dollar a month for all of the traceables for all my videos, past and present and new ones. Um, so, don't feel like just because you can't draw or you know don't want to draw 
it that you can't paint this because it's a lot of fun to paint. I really enjoyed this one. All right, so let's start out with the Earth since it's kind of the farthest thing here. We want the um, astronaut to go in front on top, so we'll put the far the farthest thing away in first. And I'm going to start with uh, a Deerfoot stippler, any kind of like stiff bristled brush. I've got one here that's a round um, stiff bristled brush. Uh, you can also use like a hog bristle brush. It's got that kind of um, white bristles. Anything like that will work for this. You just want it to be kind of a stiff brush so that we can scrub this paint because we're not going to be actually like painting on smoothly today. We're going to be scrubbing and dry brushing. So I want a little bit of water in my paint, not a lot. Tap that off on my paper towel. And I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of white. Oh, actually, before I started, I forgot. We'll get a splatter. Ooh. This is the fun part. Okay, so I'm grabbing my fan brush and getting my watery white here. Let me add a little bit more. You want it to be kind of a milky consistency when you want when you do the splattering. You could also use a sponge or a um, toothbrush, I mean. And then you want to tap it off on your paper towel just once or twice just to get the off the any drips because it can get real soupy. And then I'm just going to use my finger and tap lightly. And I want to protect my eclipse because I want it black in the middle. You're not going to see the stars on that. So I'm going to cover that part up. And I really don't want it on the earth either. So you can kind of just go around the earth, but get them nice and dark all the way around our astronaut. Okay, that's good. Now we're going to paint the earth. And you may need to, we'll probably have to do that again one more time because I'm going to be wiping off a few of these here close to the earth as I do it let me let me go ahead and do the middle part of the earth while I'm letting that dry up there clean that out I mean stickman looks so much bigger inside that astronaut suit <laughs> that stickman in there yeah nobody uh, really knew that but <laughs> hashtag fact want to be an astronaut. Yes, I did. Didn't pan out, unfortunately. Didn't really work out, no. no. Wasn't physically fit enough. So, at that point, back when I was 17, 18 years old, I decided, well, if that's not going to work out, I'm going to marry a YouTube star. <laughs> I, was so. a, I was second. Second run. Well, up. yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the worked. moon didn't it, work out. It, We're gonna... Right, exactly. <laughs> just marry YouTube star. Okay. So. I just realized I just splattered my example painting. Oh, well. <laughs> and probably a lot <laughs> of other things. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. So I've got phthalo blue and added just a little bit of white. Kind of made a medium blue color here. And I'm going to just start scrubbing right along that earth horizon line. And I don't have a lot of paint in my brush. That's the key with dry brushing. You really don't want to load up your brush too heavily or you're going to have too much paint too fast and you'll just have a big blob of paint. It won't have this kind of soft fuzzy look to it. And that's what we're going for. I want it to look kind of glowing. What uh oh and that looks like a stippler brush. Yes, it's deerfoot. Man, I'm getting good at this. Good job, honey. A couple hundred videos in, I'm starting to recognize a brush. I know, it's pretty impressive actually. Only thirty years married. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually good because I don't think you've ever really paid attention to what I 
paint or do with my art well, before. Well, as an astronaut, so it's pretty interesting now. Right, I know. I Are you going to claim this one are for you gonna, your office? Are you going to put like a boho wreath or something on its head? <laughs> no. No? I think so. We're not going to girl it up. Girl it up. Okay. okay. I'm going to trust you. Nice and masculine. Okay. So I'm just going to scrub in lightly. Don't do too much at one time. I'm just trying to make it look kind of like the cloud vapor over the top of the earth. We'll put other colors in here too, but I'm just going to try to go over your, right up to your line, not cover it up too much. Make sure you get that little bit that's between the legs there. Send a little bit. All right. And I'm kind of following the curve of the earth with my direction of my scrubbing. So I'm kind of, as I go around here, I'm tilting it this way a little bit. And then as I go around here, I'm kind of doing this direction. So just keep that in mind. All right, so there's our first layer. We'll grab a little bit of green. Mix that in. And we'll just add a little bit of green in here. A little bit of bright green. There's got all that kind of pretty green glow. Okay. I actually want to keep my brush really dry, so if I have to clean out my colors, I want to pull off all the moisture that I can before I go to another color. I grab some white here. I'm just going to press it into my paper towel there to get off any extra moisture. And we'll scrub in some cloud layers. So, very light touch here. Don't have a lot of paint on my brush. You saw I wiped most of it off. And I'm just going to kind of lay in some. Scrubby clouds here. Some of them sort of come off this direction. Yeah. And some of them are pretty bright, so I'm going to go ahead and tap in some nice bright areas in here. be dry now. They are. I'm going to grab another brush. I'll grab this one. This is the same brush. I'm just getting a clean one. And I'm going to grab that purple. And just a little touch of white. Purple is almost black, so if I put it over the top of the black without a little bit of white in it, it just wouldn't even show up. So I'm going to tap that most of it off on my paper towel there. And now I'm going to go above the earth and do a glow just above the earth with this purple. Just follow that curve. I'm really going to lose his hand there. That's okay. And following the curve as I go around. Just scrubbing back and forth. Just got to be patient with this process because it will get, it takes a little bit of time. You really have to uh, go slowly and build up your layers. So, and don't scrub too long in one place. And if you have too much paint in your brush, it can cause holes in your paint to develop. And when I, when I say holes, it means, I'll do it on paper here. What happens is you dry brush and you keep dry brushing and you keep dry brushing and you keep tapping and you keep tapping and eventually you wear a hole in the middle of that and it may not work on paper because it's but if you keep tapping long enough in one little spot you will create this halo effect you'll have dark color around here 
and you'll have a little, it's not working. <laughs> I guess I need to keep it on going. Take off all my color. It's just not going to work for me on paper, but it happens on canvas, so it just soaked right into the fibers there. Sorry, that was not as effective of a demonstration as I was hoping for. Kind of anticlimactic there. <laughs> Okay, ultramarine blue now. It's a little bit closer to the purple um, than the phthalo blue. You can see how much more purple it is here. And add a little bit of white and kind of mix it in with that purple too, just slightly. Wipe it off. Now come even closer to the earth there with this layer. Go right up close to it. And I can turn my brush over and just use the tip of the brush to scrub that color in along that horizon line. It's okay if it gets on this part down here on the earth itself. It's okay. We just kind of want that sort of glow to happen. All right. Now let's grab some more white. A little bit of our thalo blue. And then a nice bright color. Wipe most of it off. This is where we're going to do right up over that line very lightly, scrubbing up above a little bit more of the phthalo blue, Maybe not quite that bright. There we go. And really if I'd waited for the, the white dots to dry. I could have done this when I did the this color the first time. This is how I normal how I did it on my canvas. I did the purple ultramarine and then I did this color and filled in the earth with it. So see how it looks like it's glowing now? Isn't that cool? And then let's grab some more white and some of our green and some of our blue phthalo blues phthalo green and white here like a nice bright teal color okay wipe most of that off and then I'm going to turn my brush so that the tip is pointing down and I'm going to go over where my line was on the earth where that and I'm just kind of going back and forth so it's not a solid line see how that works very very light pressure Just want to define that line arc of the earth there with this bright color. And I can bring it down a little bit into the earth itself, but I want most of that to be right along that edge. Looks like it's not quite rounded enough right here. use this color a little bit in my clouds use some of that darker thalo blue put some of 
some of that back in. Nice and bright. Get some even darker. A little bit of the real dark. Mostly on this side over here. Quiet and chat today. No questions, huh? Well, to be honest, I haven't really been paying attention. Oh, really? I've been trying to look up Eclipse facts. Oh, okay. Because, like, Eclipse mania has taken over the United States. It has. We can't even find glasses, so I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. Yeah, because Or we, Monday, I mean. We kind of waited a little too late to go looking for them. I did. I did. That's my own fault. Yeah. All right, I'm going to grab some uh, quinacridone magenta and a little bit of the white. And I still have that blue in there, so it kind of toned it down. I'm just going to add a little glow of pink in a couple of places here. Just still scrubbing very little paint on my brush. Adding a little bit of that quinacridone down at the bottom. And then we'll let that set for now because we're going to add more to it later. But I want to uh, work on the Eclipse. We'll get that going. I'm going to switch to a smaller uh, deer foot. You can use a bigger one if you want to. I just wanted a little bit tighter control on it. So if you have a smaller quarter inch one, use that. Let me clean out my stippler there. going to be my little spot for my eclipse. I'm going to move it down so I can reach it a little bit easier. And I'm going to use, I'm not wetting my brush down, I'm going to start with the darker color. I'm going to use some of my cadmium red light. Here again I'm going to tap off most of the color on a paper towel. So I have just the barest little bit of paint on my brush and I'm going to lightly at first scratch in that color all the way around. Just hold down the cup with one hand or if you have a bottle or whatever. Just hold it with one hand. Don't let it move around. If you can help it. Go ahead and scrub it out and Extend it out for about a half an inch or so. And I'm not being too careful about getting it even because I want it to look like there's flare-ups all the way around it. So I'm just kind of doing these circular scrubbing motions. I'm out of paint. I'm going to grab some more. And I'm going to grab a little bit of the cadmium yellow or cadmium orange, I mean. Tap that off. We'll start adding some of that brighter color. There we go. Go around and do your circular motion so that you're getting these kind of interesting layers happening. Is my hand in the way? Uh, just in my way, but not the camera. Not the camera, okay. What do you mean in your way? Grab some yellow. Mix that together. So Mary this wants... This is where I'm going to use the tip of the brush and just get real close to the cup. Go Should ahead. I zoom in there? Sure. I'll try. Uh, Mary wants to know is how many reference photos did you look at before you settled on this one? Um, I, I just used the one, really. I liked the earth in it and I liked... The way the astronaut was floating, so uh, I made up the eclipse myself. I I looked at some photographs and then just kind of decided how I wanted to do it. I figured this would be easier than trying to paint around a circle, so using the cup and um, 
it just makes sense to use the scrubber to do this kind of soft so it's already starting to look pretty good it's a little bit bigger than the one I did because the this bottle is a little bit smaller radius but um, somebody wants to know is that another Deerfoot Stibler yes it's a smaller one mm -hmm. so like a baby deer yes it's a quarter inch one the other one was three eighths inch so but you could use a bigger size. one if you wanted it you could you could use whatever size you've got okay grabbing some more bright yellow this time just just yellow I probably shouldn't have moved that cup now I'm gonna there we go I'm gonna go real close So the brighter colors are staying closer to the cup. I brought out the oranges a little bit farther than these are going to be real close, tight into the cup. I will scrub a little bit in circle, but not as out far as far out as I did before. Okay, there we go. Ooh, now we got a nice bright Corona going on. I think I want to do a little bit more of the orange a little farther out. Grab some of that dark orange. Tap that off and we'll do some of that a little bit farther out. If you want to pull, you can kind of pull and do streaks like this out. I'm going to pull some straight streaks. talking all right so that's pretty good I think I'm happy with that so now I want to find out figure out where I want my um, starburst kind of thing coming out so I'm going to do it right about here and just start doing these circle motions and this is where you want to listen to my advice that didn't work before on the purple <laughs> thing because if you <laughs> scrub too much in the circle the middle will uh, disappear so we're just gonna very lightly scrub and get farther out as we go. That looks good. We'll do a couple more. Kind of little sunspots or something coming off like that. Let's grab some yellow. This time I'm just going to very lightly tap because I don't want to scrub off what's there before. So I'm just very lightly going to try to add a little bit of color there. There we go. Okay. I'll go a little bit farther out with my shiny bit. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of white, tap that off, right there in the spot where it's peeking out around, I'm going to put that white right there. And I'm actually going to just let need to let that set and dry because it's going to start lifting, so we'll, we'll let that set. But while I have this color, these oranges in my brush, I'm going to use that on the earth and I'm going to... Rub some of that in on that horizon. Color the clouds that might be sitting there. Grab some white and yellow. Tap that off. There we go. And just a little bit of a glow. Let me see if I can get any of this color on here without. Okay, 
That looks good. Let's let that leave that. We'll work on our astronaut. And he's actually one of the easiest parts of this whole thing. Honestly, he's quite easy. Uh, that's That was easy too, I think. All right, so I'm gonna grab some white, a little bit of black, make a gray. What are you laughing at? Oh, we're coming up with different names for the Astronaut? smaller deer foot stippler. Oh. Like Bambi stippler, <laughs> Bambi foot. So Bambi forth. foot stippler. Nice. <laughs> okay, let me, I don't know what I did with my chalk. There he is. Look at my little bear, little, little chalk holder. He's cute. <laughs> <laughs> Just got him. We went on vacation. All right, so I need to put his legs back in here. So if you want to, what I would do um, probably is paint the earth and the sun first and then draw in your astronaut so that you don't have to worry about uh, putting him in. And then I would paint his legs in probably black so that he has the black underneath all the way through. Or try to figure out where the legs are going to go before you put the earth in just so that you don't have to worry about paint around it. So I've got like three colors of gray here. Look how light, medium, and darker gray. I'm going to start with that and just set my brush down. And I'm switching to a number two bright. So it's got short bristles, very small, easy to control. I'm just going to set it down along that edge and drag it towards the middle a little bit. Like that. Do the same thing on this side. And I'm leaving spaces in between there, so it looks like those folds in his uh, spacesuit. Okay. I'm just going to kind of define his middle area here a little bit with this. Not, don't overdo it at this point. We're going to put colors in here too, so we don't want to cover too much, but I'm just kind of trying to give it a little bit of color. Let's put some color up here. I'm really kind of just follow, following the direction of the uniform or the whatever it is that I'm trying to paint in. So in this case, this backpack thingy as lines kind of coming around and down. And the arms are gonna have curved lines this way and curved lines this way. And then the body's gonna have these kind of long sweeping curves there. And I'll put a few color. Is that a quarter inch flat? Yeah, or bright, bright, bright. Quarter inch bright. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I was gonna say that first too. Good job, honey. I'm going to need to make some flashcards. <laughs> okay, so that's our first layer, just a, kind of a medium gray color, leaving lots of black through. Let's grab some blue now, some of that thalo blue, and add it to my gray. And let's use that kind of in the middle here. And this space is really going to be kind of mostly in shadow since it's not facing the sun. So we're going to have lots of blue in there. And we'll put some lighter, like brighter, um, warmer colors on this side to maybe indicate it's shiny. But... Do some sort of thing of a bobs here on his chest. Grab some of that white. Brighten it up a little bit. Okay. 
use that lighter white color on this side. Kind of right down the middle of the knees area there. Get more of that white. And it's mixing with the blue and the gray in my brush, so it's not clean. This is just straight white. It's, it's mixing a little bit with what's on my brush, so it's kind of becoming a little bit blued. And I'm leaving space around my shapes so that when I put in the next shape, there's an automatic shadow around it. So I don't want to get too close when I'm putting in my shapes. I want to leave plenty of room for my... there to be a little bit of a shadow. Let's grab that blue and put blue on this side of his helmet. Right there. And even grab a little bit of purple ultramarine blue. Mix that with the gray that I've got on my brush. Add a little, little bit of that purple right there. Let's add it underneath his chin. And on the back side of this arm here. So these this arm is going to have these folds that come up like this and curve out. So they're going to curve up and over. Just kind of imagine it curving up. We're not going to do the whole line, but we're curving it this way. And then as it gets to the elbow, it kind of changes direction and it starts to curve this way. Okay, we got a good question here. Yes. They said uh, if they had painted the astronaut white first, then went in with the colors, would that have made it tougher to get the same effect that you're getting? Yes. Yes, you, you really need that dark underneath uh, to get this effect. Just because the background's so black and he's not going to be bright white. You know, there's, um, I don't know. I, you could do it that way, though. I mean, he'd be a lot brighter, definitely. So just depends on what look you're going for. I wanted it to be kind of like he was in shadow. So that's why I did th it this way. But, yeah. It's always better from with acrylics to me uh, to go dark to light. They just do better that way. So adding some purple there to the underside of the arm here. Let's do some on the inner thigh there and on this side of his leg. And I'm just doing these short little brush strokes. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush and I'm doing it, you know, very kind of controlled little um, areas kind of like what we did down here you know take your time and build it up gradually you don't want to cover all of that black up in your first layer because then you you lose all the detail okay so let's grab some pink and I'm gonna use the pink on the visor area a little bit we'll kind of go up under the chin add some of that pink there And at this point, uh, well, no, I'm not ready for that yet, actually. Wait. I was going to say, as soon as I get it kind of mostly outlined, what I can do is is uh, erase my chalk, and that way I can see better where I still need to add a little bit of color. 
but I think that that looks okay. Let's, oh, I forgot to do his little fanny pack thing that's over here. So let's put in some of that. Right there, there's a bag. Grab some of that dark blue, put some of that on it. Okay, so let's do this side so he doesn't look like he's missing an arm. We'll do we'll clean out my brush here. And we'll do our brighter colors on this side. So I'm gonna grab some of that orange and some white. Maybe a little bit of yellow. Just want a warmer color that's kind of closer to that the sun color and I'm going to do this side and I want to kind of match up these curves with this side so I'm going to curve it in that same direction and I'm just Barely touching the hand to get that. I'm not gonna do each finger. I'm just gonna kind of touch it just a little bit. Why don't you zoom in just a little bit and I'll try to, there we go. So you try to maybe leave a little space between the fingers, but that's all I'm doing. I'm not gonna, create a fist or anything. So now I've got a little bit of green. I'll add a little bit of green in here. still have that orange in my brush. So it's kind of mixing with that a little bit. Grab some more of that white. And grab some yellow. Sorry. Man, I can't even take a drink without you going off camera on me. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I knew you weren't watching. I was like, yes. See, adding just on that one side anything that might be hitting the lights. Let's do some of his visor here. Very light here. I don't want to cover too much of this dark in the visor. Right, right away. I want to build it up slowly. And let's put a little bit of the color on this side, so maybe the light's catching right here where it's poking out. Like that. Grab some more white. Let's do his. This side. I actually don't want it up that quite that high. There we go. I want to keep that dark in there. I went up too high with my highlight color. Okay, let's do this side of his leg. dark. 
And we'll do a little bit on the visor here. Man, this is zipping along, actually. Yeah, it's not its not hard. I Pe mean, it's... People before the video started, they were like, oh, man, this is going to be forever. Mm -mm, no, yeah. really not. It's very quick. This, this technique with the brush, you know. So I'm going to add some of this bright blue. So then I better said, hey, thanks for everybody for joining us. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Give it a thumbs up. Down in the description, list all the materials being used today and links to all Angela's social media and also to the brush guys to buy brushes 5% off using her code, which is... Angela Feinhart. Man, we almost planned that. <laughs> and uh, all other kind of good things, so... To actually listen to what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> On camera. Just saying... <laughs> Maybe I should just have the camera running all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> mm, that's good. That was a good comment. Okay. okay, add a little bit of blue there to, and make, make it a little bright teal. Yeah. It's <clears throat> awesome. Yes, we're glad to have you if you are new to our channel. We are obviously don't take ourselves too seriously, but we do enjoy having fun and painting and encourage you to try it see what you think i feel like art is want to make it accessible for everybody don't want anybody to feel like just because they don't have a background in art or that they don't think they have talent with it quote unquote uh, that they can't paint because i didn't start out being able to paint like this either i had to work at it for several years and learned a few things over time and I, that's what i'm sharing with you and hopefully help you kind of make it a little bit easier to try painting for the first time if that's what you want to do so we actually have a lot of people that just watch because they like to watch paint me paint <laughs> they don't paint they don't paint at all so yes that's it's great too, really you know? modern day tv it's like a like a you know regular scheduled tv yeah, show it is yeah we do it twice a week so it's and I think a lot of the folks that uh, are in the chat and in our groups, they get to know each other, too, and we form friendships from all over the world. It's pretty cool. I know I have met a lot of really cool people from the groups and online here. All right, I'm going to add a little bit of black and thalo blue here, and I'm going to darken up this area right here. I'm just now I'm being a little bit more strategic trying to figure out getting some strategy going on here trying to figure out where I need to define add some more shadows or highlights and kind of create some dimension with our spacesuit guy astronaut aka we'll add a little bit of that brighter blue green color into the visor and as I'm doing this you see that I'm kind of curving it there's some highlights that are going to be done with the edge of my brush so I will use the edge and kind of pull and lift and sometimes I'm going to do them more straight uh, and get like more of a square look on there Let's grab some pure white now. We'll add a few really bright. So if you wanted to, at this point, you could switch to a smaller brush, you know, for some of the smaller details. I kind of like the randomness that happens with the square brush because you can't quite control exactly how it's going to look sometimes. Um, 
you get some more interesting, I feel like it's a little bit more intuitive painting. Um, so I'm going to use the edge of my brush and just do a couple little highlights in the glass there. You got a question? Bring it around. Yep. Question. Um, Luann wants to know, do the numbers on the brushes, are they standard for all brands? No, I wish. That would be nice. But no, the, it just depends on your brand uh, that you're using. This That's why um, you know it's good to kind of... Sometimes I'll put in, you know, quarter inch or something like that. Uh, this one is about a quarter inch, um, just so that you know exactly, you know, kind of how how big you need it. Um, if you can't find this exact brand, but yeah, they this this size could be a you know a three or a four or another number. They they all just all the brush, even within the same brush manufacturer, they they'll have. Uh, differences in sizes, you know, that uh, don't make any sense to me <laughs> whatsoever. So it's just, it's, it's all very random. It would be nice if it was standardized for sure. Just adding a little bit of white here, just in a few places. Here again, not having a lot of paint in my brush at any one time. That's what gives us this control and can allow us to get these sort of rough, sketchy look that we're getting, the dry brush look. If it was too... If it was too much paint on my brush, I, w I would just get big, solid clumps of paint happening, and I wouldn't have this kind of soft looking uh, see through -y kind of effect. Just works perfectly for fabric like this that's supposed to be kind of folded up and now I'm just going through with the white and very carefully figuring out where I want a little bit extra highlight. Maybe things that are might be sticking out a little bit more than another. Okay, I think that's good. Ivy wants to know if you're using mixing white. No, I'm using regular plain old titanium white for this. Plain old run-of-the-mill titanium white. Yep. Okay, a little bit of purple here. There is no titanium in it, though. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. All right. <laughs> Grabbing some black and I'm gonna put in a few of these little buckle things and spots I lost. So just a few little kind of snaps and things that are happening on his uniform. Maybe just what are you laughing at? His uniform? What is it? It's not a uniform? What is it? Spacesuit? It's a, okay. yeah, it's a suit. Spacesuit. Sure. It's a uniform. Yeah. Maybe put a little circle in this one. There's a little circle in the one I'm looking at. And there's some circles up here too, so I'll just put a couple. A couple little details in there. And I was looking at other pictures of astronaut spacesuits and they all have these tube things. Now, my picture didn't have a tube, but I feel like he needs a tube just to make him a proper astronaut. So we're gonna put in like a tube right here. Sorry, no, it's probably not real, but we're putting in like a tube happening right there. I'm gonna use the white to do the other side of it. Chat wants to know, when would you use titanium white versus mixing white? Um, I mean, I could use the mixing white in the 
in the visor if I wanted it to look a little bit see-through-ish. And that would be a time when I would use that. So there's a distinct difference between the two. Well, yeah, titanium white is is opaque and and mixing white is or, you know, uh, zinc white is transparent. So some of these that look like they're all right so grab some blue he's got some patches on his arms too this one's like a flag over here and there's one nasta one over here so I'm gonna put indicates and patches. You can get detailed with it if you want. Get some red here. Just do some stripy things with the red and white. Alright. What do you think, honey? Is it passing, passing the astronaut? It's looking good. Inspe inspection. Yeah. Stickman looks like he's doing pretty good out there. Enjoying <laughs> the eclipse. Yes, he's probably taking good pictures from the spacecraft. Okay, grabbing some more white here. I'm just going to put some white along the front of this leg. some gray and just soften that up a little bit. There we go. Okay, well I can fuss with that for hours. Okay. I had a mine too. Let me grab some white now. Add a little bit of water to it. And I'm going to use it down in my earth and I'm going to kind of set it on an angle facing the edge and just Scrub in. Some clouds don't have a lot of paint in my brush here, as usual, for these techniques. Oops, sorry, I was a little off there. Okay, and there's some trailing clouds that go there. Maybe a few over here. Grab some really bright white and a nice big bright one right here. Need my. Can I have the clicker? AKA the mouse. But he makes a clicky noise, so. <laughs> <laughs> Apples. <laughs> it's potato, potato. <laughs> oh, well, I could have done that for you. Okay. Did you ask me and I wasn't paying attention? No. Okay. I just realized that I couldn't see the earth in my picture. All right, grabbing some more of the quinacridone magenta, adding some white to it. I'm going to use that to highlight some of these clouds. Get some nice pink clouds happening.
Alright, add a little bit of that up here. Just barely touching this to my canvas. bright glow. Okay, let's add a little bit of that on our spacesuit guy too. Astronaut. Bright yellow. And then I'm going to add a little bit of it right here in the middle of my this bright spot is should should be right along that outside edge. So right there. Nice and bright. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of go around this outside edge here. sort of dry brush over the top of it slightly so that there's like a glow happening. Just kind of soften up that hard edge. put the eclipse in his visor. So grabbing some orange, we'll put a little circle. Just using the corner of my brush here. Just put a little circle in the visor. Let me grab some of that yellow. him, I want to sprinkle some of my white stars on his visor, so I'm just going to kind of cover his face there and try to get it as close. Ooh, that was bright. If you get too much, you can use a wet paper towel and just kind of dab it off. And then I'm going to just wipe it off of any places that it got where I didn't want it. And now I can kind of go over <clears throat> his suit and remove all of my chalk lines and be able to see if there's anywhere else that I need to add any detail. I should have some nice dark shadows happening. something on my hand touched it over there. We'll do something up in the sky. Okay. Yeah, I think it needs to be a little bit brighter. I still can't see that eclipse thing in his visor. There we go. up a little bit of my light blue. And I'm going to 
put it right here in this glow area that's above the earth. Let's add a little bit brighter glow up there. Okay, mm -hmm. so kind of put your man in the middle, and I'm going to zoom in on the visor. People wanted to see a close-up on it. Beautiful. <laughs> and, yeah, you know, you can see his hand is just a few little brush strokes. One kind of this way for the thumb, and a couple more this there, there, and there for the... He's only got three fingers, so... Apparently, no. I'm Stick man <laughs> doesn't really have any fingers. That's right. So, so the gloves just kind of flow in there. Yeah, it is. It's just, it is. So, yeah. There's his little bag there. So, is that, that red Deerfoot stippler you're using, is that in your brush guys list? I think there should be one. Um, I think it's the Royal Quarter Inch. It's not in the set that I normally, you know, it's not in the texture set that comes with the fan brush. It's an individual one. So, yeah. All right, let me. Were you good? I feel like I feel like I could use a few more splatters down here. Feel like we could go. And go. Grab some yellow. What? And go. We could. We could mess go. with this and just kind of fiddle with it. And, well, that's what I usually do with my paintings. I don't normally finish a painting in two hours and call it done. You know, I I usually give it time. Well, we've only been an hour and a half today, right? So that's well, about an hour and 15. Hour and 15, that's good. Yep. Very good for... So if you get too much, like I just did there, I'm just going to tap it off with a wet paper towel. I didn't... I didn't uh, I didn't touch it off on my paper towel before I went to the canvas. So. That yellow mixed my, with my white here. Let's put my thing on there. Let's get another color in our stars happening. Good enough. All right, I'm going to call it good. Thanks, guys, for watching today. Oh, yeah. sick man. Okay, so he's going to get a, he'll have to get a eclipse, obviously. We'll uh, find a cap or something to, let me see. What can I use? That's the right size. Don't overthink it here. You want a quarter? Yeah, uh, no, I'll just use a cap here. use my burnt umber oh well too late now I used the burnt umber a little bit in his uniform in mine but it's not a big deal he's getting an eclipse this one's a lot messier I didn't take enough paint out of my brush we'll scrub it in circles here and try to get it softened up Boom. Perfect. 
All right. <laughs> yeah, absolutely perfect. Okay, go back to the real painting now. <laughs> we'll give them one last look. One last look. Okay. Let me tilt it so it's not shiny. So, there we go. Oh, I need to sign it. Here's my Pigma marker here. Sign it. I'm sign I'm claiming the earth here. <laughs> it's mine. Angela Anderson. Angela lives here. Oh. That's right. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> Angela was here. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys, so much for watching today with us. And uh, we will see you on Tuesday night. I'm not sure what we're painting yet, but it'll be something fun, hopefully. And uh, we'll see you then. What? Give it a thumbs up, like, yeah, subscribe if you haven't already. We've already said all that, but yeah, one more time. And uh, if you want the traceable for this project so you don't have to draw it, uh, I will have that available on Patreon. And the link is up in the uh, iCards and down in the description. So thanks again. We'll see you next time. Bye.